Anybody bring the sausages? Hey, I wonder. I wonder if you could make like a cool little um, char grilly thing and you could put it above your smoker and you could cook your lunch. <laughs> but it's very similar to the like the Weber barbecue lighter upper things, isn't it? What do you reckon? That would work cool. Well, since everybody's curious, we thought we'd have a check of a check in our fridges or our top bar beehives. So we're just we're up to the inspection and they're the la ah, that's in my eyeballs. Those two ladies are the last on our list of um, basically our six monthly hive inspections. So we thought, well, man, it was on the list of shit to do. It's not ideal, but the cameraman's here, like the weather wise, I mean, it's not ideal, but the cameraman's here, and so we're going to give it a go. See what sort of trouble, or hopefully not trouble, that they're in. <laughs> Okey-dokey-doke. We'll just give these guys a little bit of smoking up. They're not real busy because it's that jolly cold. I think it might be advantageous if I go and get some gloves because last time I was here these girls were a little bit excitable. Have a peekaboo, shall we? Hey, hey, girls, what are we doing? Yeah, this is a little bit different. This one, because this has got a box inside a box, so that's all good. So we're just gonna. This is my internal box lid. I mean, I guess at least it's not bloody minus minus degrees or whatever it is over there in America. At the minute, I was watching a dude over there, and he's doing his winter thing, and he says. Oh, it's not too bad a day. It's bloody zero degrees at the moment. So we'll just go in here and give them a bit of sugar. I'm thinking, holy dooly, I don't think it's ever zero degrees. Well, it is here in the middle of the night, but he was out there in the afternoon. It was a pleasant afternoon of freezing cold. I'm thinking that's pretty ambitious. <laughs> anyway, let's see what they're up to, shall we? A bit one of these out here. They've got up to there, they've built out a bit of comb there. That's kind of cool actually, you can see how they're starting to draw out the comb. So here's what we put in, the foundation bit. And here they are trying to build their cells. And they've made cells up here, and they've already capped this honey off. So they're building the cells as they go, which is what they do. They only, you know, they're not real silly, they only build what they need. So if you're panicking at home with your little backyard hive and it's not building out real quick, it's probably just that the girls don't actually need to expand they don't actually need the room because I get some people asking me oh heck they're not moved up into the super to make honey and they're all down in the brood box well because they're logical so they start until the brood box is full of honey and resources and laying and carrying on and it's all relative like right now there's stuff all now because <laughs> the weather's crap so it's all relative to what the weather's doing so the girls have got more sense than us lot they don't actually build houses with nobody to live in them They're getting a bit of nectar from somewhere. Uh, something's going on. I don't think we'll be harvesting anything out of here for a minute, but still. Top of smoke ring again? Oh, come on. <laughs> it's not ideal, my pine needles are out of whack. I'm trying to burn some wet sort of well, damp grass from the shed. Where's the boss chicks? Gosh, I hope she's not on holidays. That'd be a bit of a worry, wouldn't it? Off flapping around the Caribbean. <laughs> well, considering she's a bit feral, they're not too crazy. She's obviously stopped laying for a little bit, now she started again. She's got a lot of eggs in those ones. It's not a really big brood nest. I haven't really seen the boss, but I haven't... Um, I've seen there she's been, so that's a good start. Hmm. There's plenty of young stuff coming on, so they must have... Maybe something started to happen just lately. We 
like I said, they blooming half of them buggered off anyway, so that wasn't real prof really bloody ideal. <gasps> so there's a little bit of honey this end. They're finding a bit of flow. A few, few moths, a few wax moths hiding underneath that frame. You bastards. So that's a slight design error I've got. That's why you need to have a little bit of gap underneath your frames. Because then jolly moths can hide out of the way. And the ladies can't get and attack them. And it's not what you need. Oh, the heck. Isn't it always the way? There's always an arch enemy, whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> so apart from that bit of excitement with the few wax moths, they don't look too bad, I don't reckon. Next time being that I've made a box, inside a box, I think I would, I didn't get this bit exactly square. So this end, the frames are slightly too down into the actual box. This end's perfect. About where they are in the middle isn't bad and then it just gets a bit too confined. So, I mean, it's only out by a couple of millimeters, but it's enough for the moth, moths to be able to hide underneath the frames so the girls can't actually get at them. And so there's a bit of a design fault, but other than that, I don't know. If you want a bee box in a fridge, it's not bad. <laughs> so we don't want the ladies trapped on the, under the lid because they can't get back home. But now they're over out here, so they're just a little bit stirred up. <laughs> Jobs pending. <laughs> is that what it is? Bloody hell. Bloody rough bush bee man fella, honestly. Since the fridge is still going, I thought we'd better put our mark on it. That's a bit of a play of words, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's going to be a lovely day. I'm already sweating. <laughs> or maybe I'm just wet because I've been doing my mum's bloody irrigation in her garden. Part two of this episode because as you saw we've seen the one down the shed we've checked her out we're checking out our fridge on the hill we got our tits blowing off last time and now we thought we'd better get here before we actually get roasted well, I was thinking about bringing a frying pan we might do that this afternoon and get an egg and chuck it drop it on the top of a beehive and see if it cooks <laughs> anyway it's a nice morning we thought we'd have to have a look at these ladies and see what they're up to say so these washable gloves sort of work they're not, they're not quite as sticky as the or stiff as the other ones hello chicks Heck, they don't look really busy in here. Oh, get off, Mr. Roly Poly. Let's just see what our ladies are up to, shall we? Well, there's going to be 47 here today, so I thought perhaps I won't like me smoking because I think that's against the rules. But we're going to have a bit of a peekaboo and we'll see. But anyway, if the film gets a little bit cut out, just it's probably the cameraman being attacked because. Something about tall people, they go to them first. Or they might be trained. What are we doing, ladies? Hey? Are you doing anything? Or are you just all freaking out in here? This crazy bush bee man fridge. They're not attacking us, that's a good start. <laughs> gently, gently we go, since we're not really distracting them. I wonder if during the fire ban we should get the sugar water thing idea happening. I don't know whether that works either. I've tried the whole sugar water thing and that's not that productive. What are you girls up to? Anything useful? I reckon next spring we'll see if we can't um, get this old brood comb out of here. These were out of the kitchen, weren't they? The kitchen cupboard that was frigging off its chops. <laughs> They're probably a little bit freaked out here in the fridge. They're not being real busy, but hell, it's not the best conditions here at the minute. Hello, I'm a little bird. I'm a little worm. <laughs> Whew, golly gosh, it's gonna be a lovely day. Oh, there's a bit of larvae there. 
little tiny bit there. So they're not real hectic. Mind you, they're probably just conserving their energy at the minute because it is ridiculous. A bit of a downside to having your bees in a top bar fridge. They're a bit hard to move <laughs> if they're in a bit of sparse environment. They're not actually exploding with enthusiasm. <laughs> but anyway. I say, we are in the middle of some pretty arduous conditions. I'm just wondering whether they've lost their queen, but I think what's going on is they're struggling because it's such bloody crap conditions. And when it's like that, then they don't actually lay new, new brood. Although they've got a bit of nectar there on that frame. So maybe it's not too terrible. Perhaps they're going to pick up yet. If they manage to find a little bit of nectar, and then they can find a bit of pollen, then maybe the queen will start laying again. I haven't seen any queen cells. So, I reckon she might just be having a holiday, but we might go back through again and see if we can find her. But it's only that one frame that's actually doing anything. There's a couple of young larvae here. So she must be in here somewhere. I was going to get these girls a new queen, but it's been an interesting year for queens and boxes and little bees and oh my goodness me, everybody's having fun. This jolly, hot, miserable drought hasn't done anybody any good. Poor bloody cows haven't got anything to eat and the trees don't have any flowers and so the ladies are going, what the hell happened? Mind you, that's not here, that's up where they breed bees, breed the queens. Anyway, she's still going along. I don't know where she is, she's hiding in here somewhere. Has anybody ever actually written a song about bees, I wonder? I think they have, I think it's, what's that, what's that bloody um, march of the bees or something that most bee people put on their repertoire but I think apparently it's copyrighted so I'm not sure how much it costs to have a copyrighted song all I get told all the time stop bloody singing those songs no singing Beatles songs they're copyrighted and I like one of the comments on the net though someone said I sing so shit no one should be doing they probably sue me for being insulted not necessarily stealing their talent <laughs> I thought that was about on the money uh, I'm flat out singing Skippy the Bush Kangaroo Goodness me, and that's a fairly simple song. If I can't get that right, there's no hope for me. But I did think maybe I'll write a children's book about bees. That might be a bit of fun. He's writing a bit like talking. You just got to make it interesting. Anyway, stay tuned. You never know what might pop up on the Bush Bee Company site. Hey, I was just thinking, you know what would be interesting? We should get ourselves one of those crazy thermometers. You can get these really cool something else we could have an experiment at. We can get these really cool um, remote remote hive monitoring systems. But, I mean, it's a bit out of my bit out of my economical range, but it'd be rather cool to put it in this fridge and see whether it's a difference between here and a, and a normal hive, in the paradise hive, and we could have a cross-reference and see who's not the hottest. Because there's a few different models out there on the hive monitoring things that I've seen around the shows. So, I don't know if anybody out there has a an interest or an inkling as to what they'd like to see tried out, just email us and hell, you never know, we might chase up the company and you can all check it out with us.